in the last lecture we created a template driven form and we are reading the value entered in that form and we are passing it to the dashboard component currently we are only reading the value from the form and we are logging it in the developer console now in this lecture we will learn how we can create a new record in the database by sending a post request to the server so keep in mind that when we want to create a new record in the database we need to send an http post request to the server and with the post request we also need to send a request body which will contain the data with which we want to create a new record in the database and in our application we are already reading that data from the form so in this angular application if i click on this create task button it will open a form in this form when we enter some data and when i click on this create task button we are reading this data from the form and we are passing it to the dashboard component so here we are going to receive that data all right now what we want is we want to make a post request to the server and with that post request we want to send this data as the request body let's see how we can do that now in order to make an http request to the server the first thing which we need to do is we need to import http client module in the app module so let's go to app module file and there in the imports array let's import http client module and we need to import this module from angular slash common slash http so let's write that import statement so we want to import http client module from angular slash common slash http all right so this is the first step then we want to use this http module in our dashboard component so what we need to do is we need to ask angular to inject an instance of http client class in this dashboard component for that let's create a property i'll simply call it as http and the type here is going to be http client and in order to use this http client we also need to import it from angular slash common slash http okay and in order to ask angular to inject an instance of this http client we are going to call the inject method and in order to use this inject method again we need to import it from angular slash co so let me select it here and it will be automatically imported and to this we need to pass the type of the instance which we want angular to inject here here the type is going to be http client so now angular will inject an instance of this http client class inside this dashboard component class and that instance will be assigned to this http property now using this http property that means using the instance of this http client class we can make http request to the server so let's go ahead and let's make a post request from within this create task method so inside this create task method we are going to receive the data which the user has entered in this form in this form and we want to send that data with the post request to the server so first of all let's go ahead and let's make a post request so i'll remove this console.log statement from here and in order to make a post request and for that matter in order to make any type of http request in angular we need to use the instance of this http client class so let's go ahead and let's access this http property from here for that we can use this keyword and on that we have different methods for making different types of request here we want to make a post request so for making the post request we will have a method called post and when we call this method it is going to make a post request to the server that means in this case the http verb will be post all right now this post method takes two mandatory parameters the first parameter is the url the endpoint to which we want to make an http request to the server here we want to insert data into the database which we created in this firebase and in order to work with that database here we have this url so using this url we can access this database so let me go ahead and let me copy this url and 
let's go ahead and let's pass that URL here. Okay, so this URL it is going to give us access to this database. But inside this database, currently we do not have any collections. So what we also want is inside this database, we want to create a collection called tasks. And in that tasks collection, we are going to save all the tasks which we are going to create. But currently, we don't have that tasks collection here. Now, in order to create that tasks collection, to this URL, we can add a slash. And after that, we can specify a name. Here, I'm going to specify tasks. And after that, let's also append dot JSON. Because as we have learned, a collection is nothing but a JSON data. So a collection contains a list of JSON objects. Right. So that's why we are appending JSON after it. Now, what this will do is when we are making a post request to this URL. So this URL is for the database. And in that database, we are looking for this tasks collection. Now, if that collection does not exist, in that case, this post request will create that collection for us in that database. But if it already exists, then it is simply going to use that collection and insert a new record in that collection. Currently, we don't have any collection called tasks in this database. So when we will make the first request to this URL, first a collection called tasks will be created. And in that collection, a new record will be inserted. So this is going to be the URL. Now, since we are making a post request, with the post request, we also need to send the data with which we want to create a new record. Basically, with the post request, we also need to send the request body. And in the request body, I want to send the data which the user has entered in the form. And we have that data inside this data parameter. So we are going to pass this data as the second argument to this post method. Now here, when we are making a post request, we need to send JSON data with the request body. But this data here, it is a JavaScript object. Now, this post method will take care of converting this JavaScript object into the JSON data. So we need not to worry about that. That will be automatically taken care by this post method. So remember that when we are calling this post method in order to make a post request, there are two mandatory parameters which we need to pass the URL to which we want to make the request and also the data which we want to pass with the post request. All right. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's go to our application. First of all, let me go ahead and let me open developer console. And here I am going to go to the network tab. Okay. Now, Let's click on this create task button. It will open the form here. Let's enter some data. So let's say the task name is task one. Let's enter some description here. Let's assign it to someone, maybe John Smith. And let's select the created date. Let's select today's date. Let's select the severity. Let's say it's medium. And let's also select the status. Let's say it's open. Now here, I'll clear all these requests. For that, let's click on this clear button. And now, when I click on this create task button, you will see no request has been sent here. Now, why is that? That's because this post method here, it returns us an observable. Okay. And as you can see, it returns us an observable. And for this observable, currently we don't have any subscribers. And since we don't have any subscribers, we have learned in observables lecture that an observable will only return us some data if there is any subscriber for that observable. If there is no subscriber, in that case, that observable will not emit the data. Currently for this observable, which this post method is returning, it does not have any subscriber. And since it does not have any subscriber, it is not sending any request to the server. Only when there will be a subscriber for this observable, the observable which this post method will return, in that case only, it is going to send a post request to the server. So here, let me go ahead 
and let me subscribe to the observable which this post method is going to return okay now if you want to handle the response which this post request is going to return in that case you can pass a callback function the first callback function to this subscribe method so as we have learned in the observable lecture when an observable emits some data we can handle that data by passing a first callback function to the subscribe method and that callback function is also going to receive the data which the observable has returned since we are making a post request to the server the server is going to send us some response and we are going to receive that response here for this first callback function as its parameter now here i'll simply go ahead and i will log that response in the console okay now let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me clear the network tab here let's click on this create task button let's enter some details in the task let's enter some description okay let me clear the network tab again and now when i click on this create task button you will notice that two requests has been sent here this is the first request which was sent and this is the second request which was sent now you'll ask that why two requests is being sent here so if i open this first request you will notice that the request method is options that means the http verb for this request is options and then if i open the second request there you will see that the request method is post now here we have two requests because this is the default behavior of a browser whenever we make a post request to the server the browser will make two requests the first request will be of type options and then if that request returns a success message as you can see in this case it is returning a success message it is returning the success code 200 then only the browser will make another actual post request to the server if it does not return a success message in that case the post request will not be made so this options request simply checks if the post request is allowed to be sent to the server or not if it is allowed then it is going to return a success message with the success code 200 and in that case the actual post request will be sent to the server so here you can see a post request is also sent to the server and we are receiving this status code 200 which means okay that means the post request was successful so now if i go to the database you will notice that a collection called tasks has been created earlier this collection was not there but now a collection called tasks has been created and if i expand this collection there you will see a folder you can call it as a document so basically this is a document it is a key for the document if i expand this here we have our data so this is the title for the task this is the status of the task priority of the task description created at and assigned to so this is a json object and for this json object this value is the key now keep in mind the key for each of these documents in this collection is going to be unique no two documents in a collection will have the same key so this value here it is the key and this data which you see here it is the value it is a json object and for each json object in the collection the key is going to be unique and later in this section we will learn that how we can use this key to update a record and also to delete a record okay so as you can see a new record has been created in the database inside this tasks collection now let's go back to our application and let's go to console tab and there you will notice that in the response we are receiving an object and in that object we have one property called name and that name is assigned with that key value so it is the same key value which is set for this json object okay so it ends with j m a n a and here also you can see it ends with j m a n a so we are receiving this response now what we can do is here when we are making a post request this post method is of generic type and here we can set which type of response we are expecting from the server so here we can use angle brackets and we know that for this post request in the response we are going to receive an object in that object we are going to have a 
name property whose value is going to be of type string so we can set this type as the response type for this post method all right so for this post method we are passing two mandatory arguments the url we are also passing the body for the post request and then this post method also takes an optional third argument and using that third argument we can set some headers for this post request so here we need to pass an object in that object we can specify headers and there to that we can assign an object and in that object we can set our custom headers for example here i'm going to set my header okay and its value is let's say hello world just to show you how it works or what we can also do is here inside this create task method let's go ahead and let's create a variable let's call it headers okay and in order to create a header we can use http headers class so for that we need to instantiate http headers class and this h should be caps here and in order to use this http headers we also need to import it from angular slash common slash http all right now here we need to call the constructor of this http headers and there we can pass an object and in that object we can set our headers so i'll cut it from here and i'll paste it here okay and let me remove this object from here and now here to this let's assign this headers all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's create a new record so let's click on this create task button let's create another task let's call it maybe another new task let's add some description okay let's assign it to maybe mark what let's select the created date as today's date let's select the severity as high and let's say it is in progress okay let me again go to network tab let's clear everything here and let's make a request so again you will see that another post request has been made let's open this request and there we are in the headers section here we can see general information here we can see response headers and here we can see request headers so for the request we have set one header this my header and its value is hello world so as you can see using the third argument of this post method we can also set some custom headers in this case we are setting this header this my header and its value is hello world so a header is nothing but a key value pair okay here if you want you can also set multiple headers currently we are only setting one header but we can also set multiple headers separated by comma and here you can specify another key value pair so now if we go to the database there now we should have two records so this is the first record and this is the second record this is the second task okay all right so in this lecture we learned how we can make a post request to the server from our angular application for that we are using the post method of http client and to this post method we need to pass two mandatory arguments the endpoint the url to which we want to make the request and the data which we want to pass as the body of the request this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day